today. We're going to give you something different, a PowerPoint. Uh, Brother Tabaja here, we all attend the Israel of God Bible study class. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We keep the Sabbath day. We keep the Lord and the dietary law. So anything that's coming out of that book, that's what we deal with. Fables, we don't. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to my brother. Of course, uh, if you guys have any questions, can y'all hold off until he's done? So that way we can make sure we meet y'all on, on your lunchtime. Uh, and of course, the Lord knows what time lunch is too. And we finna have the first part of lunch, which is spiritual. And that's the most important part. So uh, like I said, the book is about salvation. And uh, any way that the Lord see fit to give us, to give y'all the word, that's the way we bring it. So uh, with that being said, Brother is on deck. That's right. I'm on. And I'll see y'all in a little bit. And the reader is our brother from Waco, Brother Nap Tyler. So uh, we hope y'all enjoy. We are out enjoy him. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd fragrant. I love it. All right. All right. All right. Yes, sir. All right. And his daughter. Hey. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, happy first day of the week to you. Um, normally at the Israel God, you know, we congregate on the Lord's Sabbath day. In fact, not normally, we congregate on the Lord's Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Amen. Um, so today, nonetheless, the word still got to go out seven days out of the week, and this is no different for you. So I hope you guys get some understanding today. I hope you are edified. Please hold all questions to the end. Um, and more than anything else, I pray that you're blessed by this word, um, and it pricks you in your heart and provokes some change in your life as well. Right. That being said, my brother's going to open this up, and then I'm also going to do a, a small personal prayer as well, just so we can have, you know, the spirit of understanding upon all of us. Amen. But now, when you got it, go for it. All right. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Yes, Lord. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judges. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou, thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew respect a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I have read Psalm 51 verses 1 through 4, 1 through 3, and 7 through 11. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, y'all would just bear with me for one second. Keep your heads bowed. Father God, we thank you for this time to come before you right now. We thank you that you even woke us up today. Thank you for the, the gift that is the breath of life. We thank know that Lord. each day is not promised nor guaranteed. You owe us nothing. We owe you everything, Father God. So we thank you for your dealing with us in your mercy and not in your wrath. And I just pray for the hearts and minds of everybody who is in attendance right now, Father God, that they would not see me nor they would see anybody else up here speaking, but they would only hear your word and let that be the thing that speaks to them. Yes, Lord. I pray for uh, change in all of our lives. I pray that understand that we are you know the, the patients and we need to take to the treatment at the hospital and we need to take to this medicine which is this word to change us to make us more like you to make us acceptable for your use father god so we give you all the glory in advance and pray for your spirit to dwell among us today that we may receive understanding and edification in jesus name we bless forevermore let us all say amen, amen. amen. praise god all right, all right. right. Turn it off on the good night. let's get it all right, let's see. So, in case you cannot tell, and hopefully y'all can see the TV screen and all that kind of stuff right there. In case you cannot tell, today we're going to be dealing with a matter that affects all of us in here. Sometimes it's going to manifest a little bit different in all of our lives, right? You know, what my sister may be dealing with right here may be different with what my brother's dealing with right here, so on and so forth. But nonetheless, we have, uh, we have a solution. We have a treatment in this word right here. And first and foremost, for us to be able to deal with the problem, we need to understand what it is. So we're going to break it down and try to get a biblical and solid understanding of what sin is 
and you know what are the, some of the ramifications of it, what are some of the causes and effects. Definitely encourage y'all to read. Um, we're going to go through the Bible, and I don't want y'all to be able to say, hey, you know, he told us this or he told us that. No, we read this together out of the book. I'm not going to give you any private interpretations or anything like that. I'm not going to tell you what I think. It's going to simply read the Bible and show you what thus says the Lord. That's it. That's simple. Keep it short and to the point. So now, we're going to jump right on in. Usually I would set this up with a uh, like an overview. We're going to jump right on in. First things first, getting a conceptual understanding of sin. Wrapping our minds around what is sin. So, if the sound works, great. We're going to get it. If not, that is okay. You know what? We are still going to move. I Behavior that's oh. crooked. Well, well, transgression good. refers to breaking trust. And sin, this is actually the most common of these bad words in the Bible. It's on hit for a few minutes. Sin translates the Hebrew word chata and the Greek word hamartia. The most basic meaning of sin isn't religious at all. Chata simply means to fail or miss the goal. Like when the Israelite tribe of Benjamin trained a small army of slingshot experts, they could sling a stone at a hair and not chata, that is, fail or miss. Or there's a biblical proverb that warns against making hasty decisions because you're likely to chata your way, miss your destination. So in the Bible, sin is a failure to fulfill a goal. But what's the goal? Well, on page one of the Bible, we learn that every human is an image of God a sacred being who represents the Creator and is worthy of respect. And so in this way of seeing the world, sin is a failure to love God and others by not treating them with the honor they deserve. You can see this idea in the famous code of conduct given to the Israelites, the Ten Commandments. Half of them identify ways you can fail at loving God, and the other half name ways you can fail at loving people. And the fact that both kinds of failure are combined shows that failing to honor God is deeply connected to failing to honor people. This is why in the Bible, sin against people is sin. Yes, okay, that's cool. And that stopped on purpose. I know it's an awkward stopping point, but that's what I wanted to bring out. The whole idea from this video is giving us an understanding of what sin is. Now, depending on who you watch, listen to on YouTube, different things like that, you may have heard the term missing the mark, mm -hmm. right? And so think about what we have right here, our target. If anybody maybe shot like a bow and arrow or maybe even went out to the gun range or something like that, right? You have a target that you are trying to hit. And any time you fail to hit that target, you either just miss or you cause harm to somebody who might be, you know, a stander by, right? So one aspect of sin is missing the mark of God's standard set for humanity. At first blush, the missing the mark might sound like it could be referring to a simple mistake or unintentional error. But with sin, we know that it's much deeper than that, right? Missing the mark actually refers to failing, uh, falling short of God's glory through conscious choosing of sin. And that is the thing right there, right? Sin is a choice. You are responsible for <coughs> quite a bit in your life, but fundamentally speaking, what's going to get you into the kingdom or what's going to get you cut off are the choices that you make, right? Let's look at the biblical definition of sin. Let's go ahead and open up our book to the first place. First John chapter three, verse four. First John chapter three, verse four. Now, this is not the gospel of John. This is the epistle of John. So we're going to be closer to the end of the Bible. 591. Page 591. We got our sister's going to call out the page yeah, number. Yeah, she our page call. Sister Angela. Oh, yeah, no, sorry, sorry. We got our page. We got our sister in the back calling That's out the page right. number. Everybody's got the same type of Bible, so we should be able to flip there like that. Right there. Page 591. First John chapter 9. 3, verse 4. 590. Yeah, 590. <laughs> I got to listen back. I got to listen back. There you go. Page 590. Yeah. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Brother Napoli, you got it. Go ahead. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. Now, if you remember from the video real quick, it talked about the basic way in which man can uh, commit sin is to violate the Ten Commandments, right? Failure to, failure to love your brother or failure to love God is the most fundamental way that you can group or categorize all types of sin, right there, right? So some synonyms you may read in the King James Bible like we do. You may read some other words. Err, fault, transgress, trespass, fall, state, offense. All of these are still referring to the fact that a person has committed a sin. So again, you're reading this, think sin. Thanks, sir. 
right? Now, here's what's cool. A basic dictionary will also coincide with what the Bible has said, right? If I just look at dictionary of choice right here, American Heritage, right? A transgression of a religious or moral law, especially when deliberate. Who knows what deliberate means? On purpose. Say it again. On purpose. On purpose. I thought about it. I know it's wrong. But I did it anyway. But I did it anyway. <laughs> Say it again. Oh, and let's let's get the second one. Deliberate disobedience to the known will of God. In other words, read, thou shalt not, but you shout. You shout. You shout not head. All that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Ah. Anyway, transgress. Now, is it safe to say everybody in here has personal boundaries for their life, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning you won't let just anybody do anything to you, right. right? You have limits, right? You have enough, hopefully you have enough self-respect and stuff like that to where, say, to where you're comfortable saying no when it comes down to it. If you don't, I suggest that you get that. Your life is going to be a whole lot easier when you learn the word no. No. Right? Mm -hmm. When somebody transgresses, they go beyond or over a limit. They overstep. You ever had somebody overstay their welcome? You yeah. open up your you open up your house, you open up whatever to them. <laughs> Next thing you know, six weeks later, they're still on your couch, ain't found a job, nothing. Ain't paying you no rent, nothing like that. You put the in your Man, say it again. You get down there and you sit, there's that dipping slip. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a transgression. Now, some of y'all grew up in the country, had a big, big old, big old place, right? Acres and acres of land. Right. Somebody done like, ooh. I see some cows I want to take. Let me. And they step on your property. When they step on your property, what have they done? Trespass. And what happens to trespassers? Get shot. Bang! That's it. You got it. Trespass to commit an unlawful, lawful injury to a person, property, or rights to another. They get playing, brother. So in other words, you were coming on there. You know they don't belong to you. But you went and you tried to take it. And you deal with the consequences of breaking and entering. Deliberate. Come on now. Deliberate. Lust. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing though. You can get a job, you can work, you can have the same thing your brothers have. Oh, and right. even better, if you serve the Lord, He's going to multiply. That's right. He'll get you. So you don't need to take what belongs to somebody else. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, talking to a brother in, in Fort Worth, right? And he's mad, he's upset, he's, you know, can tell he's dealing with some anger. And then what, what's, what's magnifying that is the fact that, yes, he's homeless and somebody was stealing his stuff from him, right? And you know your resources right now, you don't have an abundance of everything. You only have a few dollars here or a few pieces of food here, just that few articles of clothing. And yeah. the fact that somebody still feels like they need to steal from you when they know you're shorthanded, right? Yeah, that's not going to sit right. Right? You wouldn't want somebody doing that to you. Why are you going to do that to somebody else? Why are you going to you know, cause the hate and the hurt and the pain that you yourself would not want to experience? Failure to love your brother, failure to love God equals sin. Get back into the Bible. Right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, we understand that sin is a breaking of God's law, and we all we all do it. Yeah. But I'm going to argue that that doesn't mean that you are a sinner. And why I say that is you're not habitually practicing it. That's right. You're not waking up and it's the first thing on your mind every single morning. That yeah. is the akin to being an addict or an alcoholic or something like that. Where you've got to function throughout the day, i got to have that drink, otherwise I ain't no good. I gotta have that smoke. I gotta have all that. At that point in time, those things have become an idol. Mm -hmm. If you make mistakes, you make the wrong choices from time to time. That doesn't mean that you were locked in the sin, right? Let's prove that. Usually, we go to Paul. We'll go to Paul in a second. I actually want to go to Jesus first because Jesus and Paul are actually saying the same thing. Saint John, the Gospel of John, chapter eight, verse thirty-four. The Gospel of John, Saint John, chapter eight, verse thirty-four. And we're gonna wait on that page. Huh? Uh, 515? 515? 513. 513. 513. Page 513. 513. 513. 513. So it's going to start on one, end on the other. Yeah. Page 512 and 513. Let's look at what Jesus said, because at the end of the day, as much as we may respect Paul, the words in red have to take precedence. I know y'all's words may not be in red, but it's okay. We know typically Jesus' words are in red. Let's go for it. St. John 8 and 34. Jesus answered them. Very verily I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Man, look. Mm -hmm. So if you work at uh, Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. You are an employee of who? Amazon. Amazon. Amazon, right? If you work for Dallas ISD, 
right? You are an employee of BISD, right? Now, if you are out here constantly committing sin, willfully, deliberately, like the words we've been using, committing sin, you are a servant of Satan, Satan. who is, you know, the reason why we have sin in this world. There we go. So I like that y'all jumped a whole level right there. Yes. Yeah, I was hoping nobody said God right there. I was like, oh, no, we need to have a little intervention right there. No, that's good. That's good. No, you are a servant of sin, and by proxy, you are a servant of Satan. That's right. right? Remember, he said, remember when Jesus was yelling at the people trying to stone him, you know, you are of your father the devil. For he committed, he's been a murderer since the beginning. He's the father of lies, all that's those right. things right there, right? That is where sin comes from, right? But we're going to take it a little bit deeper. Let's go over to Romans. The book of Romans. That's about... It's actually two books over. There you go. Two books toward, toward the end. Romans 6. 543. 543. Oh, that's a competition. Oh, that's a competition. <laughs> that's a competition. Hey, hey, don't let nobody steal your job. Here. Don't let nobody steal your job. Let's look at what Paul said. Because, of course, Paul... Is probably the most quoted individual in the Bible. Understandably so. He wrote a majority of the New Testament. Respect. Let's look and see if he coincides with what Jesus said. Let's see if we co-sign right here. Uh-oh. New guard page, whatever. Uh, go ahead, read, bro. Okay. Say, uh, Romans 6, 15 through 18. Go ahead. What then shall we sin? <clears throat> because we are not under the law, but under grace. God yeah. forbid. Did you get uh did you get 15? 15. 15. 15, yeah, that's what we're that was 15. 15. Oh, snap, I might have a little uh, typo on my thing. It's all good. Uh, pick it up where it says being free, uh, being then uh, made free. 18. From Is that 18? Yeah. Yeah, no, stick with what you had. Stick with stick 15. with 15. I had that in there for a reason. Hey, I'm a human. I made mistakes. So it know. is what it is. Start with 15. All right, start Get from the top. Yep. 15. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Mm -hmm. God forbid. God forbid. So real quick, when we see that term, under the law, right here, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning you are subject to or under the penalty of the law. You only do that if you break the law. Case in point, stop sign, right? Mm -hmm. It's the most basic example we can give you. I cannot give you a ticket for running a stop sign if you don't run the stop sign. That's right. I cannot call you a thief if you are not stealing. I cannot call you a sinner if you are not sinning. Just that simple. Continue. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. So in other words, how you live your life is representative is representative of who you serve, right? right? If you're living your life as a sinner, as a, I'm going to just use the words that are in the Bible, as a whoremonger. We live in a very hyper-sexualized society, right? Yes, sir. You see it everywhere, all on the internet and everything like that, right? And it can really mess with you mentally if you continue to consume those things mm -hmm. right there, right? So on and so forth. It could be adultery, it could be thief, it could be covetousness, whatever it is. But if that is all that you are about, that is reflective of who it is you serve, that is truthfully letting the world know who's God or who is your God. I think it's not like me. Anyway, continue. I'll work on the technology. Continue. In 16, yes. whether of sin unto death or obedience <laughs> unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the service of sin, that ye were the service of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart their form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Mm. Being then made free from, free from sin, ye became the service of righteousness. Amen. 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 That's Amen. good, bro. That's yes. it right there. Man. Yes. Wow. All right. So, apparently, this wants to act a fool on me, but it's all good. All right. So, um, I have no idea what is going on, and you know what? I want to make sure I respect everybody's time. So we're gonna keep it pushing. We got a good time, bro. If yep. we got time to fix it, it's all good. I'm in a I'm in a flow right now, so I I ain't even gonna I ain't gonna trip on it. All right. So as you can see, one once you once you met God. Once you found God, once you found out what his standards were and everything like that, then, you know, hopefully your life changed. Now, there's, there's a kind of a key thing I need to talk, uh, tie in real quick. It's the fact that you have people that understand, you know, from a knowledge standpoint, what, what the word says, 
but that does not necessarily mean that the word has changed them. Mm-hmm. And that's a dangerous thing right there because as the book says, your your end is going to be worse than your beginning. Correct. Because mm-hmm. you, you you start walking, you know, you know, oh, I made a change, this, that, and the other, but then you get caught up in the same things that you left behind. Okay. Mom, come on now. Come on now. Mm-hmm. So again, we don't want those things to happen to you guys right there, right? That's why we're sharing these things. So now, we understand that God is a covenant God, right? Does anybody can anybody tell me? None of the IOG people. Can anybody <laughs> tell me what is a covenant? What's another word for a covenant? A promise. Okay, I like it. So a promise. What else? What do you sign to uh, to Agree. to say again? Agreement. A- agree. I love it. Agreement starts with the letter C. There's another word. It starts with the letter C. Okay. Commitment. Commitment or a I sign a contract. contract. Yes. It's a contract, a promise, an agreement, a commitment right there, right? Terms now, and agreement. Terms and conditions. Terms and conditions. Now, <laughs> in those things right right there, right, they also outline not only the promises that can be made, they also outline the consequences for what happens if right. that contract is been well, broken, yes, right? right? Somebody's going to get sued. Somebody, Something bad's going to happen to somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And so now I'm going to call on my assistant right here to help illustrate this point. We need to focus in our next section on what does separation look like when that contract has been broken. So I'm going to help illustrate this point with a quiz link. I'm going to ask. I should have to ask. I know y'all are grown, but I'm still going to ask. Don't eat it yet. And if you don't like Twizzlers, even better. She's going to ha- uh, she's going to hand out one Twizzler to everybody, and then I'm going to give you guys some instructions here in just a second. All right? So everybody's going to get one Twizzler. And if y'all want to switch to y'all can, y'all can absolutely get just to participate. <laughs> it's all good. Here we go. I was going to say, you know, I trust everybody's hands are going to be clean. Yeah, you can set it down. We all family in here anyway. Once everybody's got a Twizzle, then we'll uh, we'll get to the point. I know it's all like rough reading and stuff. That is some stuff but it, it yeah, we going to take one? They took my skills, so I'm glad we had Twizzlers. Hey, so I, I, I have somebody on camera breaking the contract. Look, yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, actually, yeah, let, let me let me give one for illustration purposes. This is for YouTube right here. There you go. There, there you go. go. There we go. My sister, she got one for you as well. Again, don't eat it just yet. I can eat it now. Ah. I did this with the kids last week, and they're all like nibbling, like, nah, 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 like come on, y'all. Here's some basic instructions. You want to get one like these? Just yeah, to help illustrate. Yeah. <laughs> Try to make it a little different today. Ooh. They stuck together like mud. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me get one myself. Let me get one for Brother Nap. <laughs> We're going to have some fun. Get one to Brother Stan. <laughs> you take one for yourself, too. Okay. Everybody got a twist. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So, this is our Twizzler. Yep. And it's all good. Now. Here's what I want y'all to do. This Twizzler is going to represent the bond. It's going to represent the covenant, right? Right. right? I want you to gently, gently just hug on it. Don't try to break it. And you see there's some strength, but there's a little give. Uh-huh. In every relationship and in every covenant, yes, you sir. need a little give so you can receive forgiveness. Right? Right. right? Come on now. And right. so this also lets you know that it can't be easily broken. Now, on the count of three, I want you to tear it in two. One, two, three. Right? So now the covenant has been broken. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Try putting it back together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, it might stick a little. Oh. It's thick, but it ain't thin. Now, it's got some potential. It's trying to stick, right? It's trying to come back together. That lets you know that there's some more work that needs to be done mm-hmm. in order for it to come back come together. Now, right? Come on now. It needs right. some more work to be done, right? Right. Okay? Like but it. it's been I broken, like this, right? Yeah. This could also represent people's trust. That you may have broken or your trust that's come on, man. Make it plain, bro. Come on now. So now, here's the other thing. If there's no attempt to make to fix it or to to bring it back together, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to tear it into even smaller pieces. As many pieces as you want. It could be seven, it could be ten. I don't care. I'm gonna ask you for your number here in a second. (laughs) I'm gonna ask you for your number. Okay, so I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. I've got about eight pieces. How many pieces you got, brother Mike? Four. We got about four. How many pieces we got? Uh, my sister in the red. How many pieces you got? Three. Three? How many pieces we got in the back? Nothing. You're not finished. She's still tearing. How many pieces? Seven. seven. How many pieces my guy? Right, we got my brother. Five? Six. Six? Seven. Seven? Eight. Eight. Five. Five? Eight. Eight. Okay. Here's the thing. 
Try putting those back together. Ooh. Um, I see the concept. When you continue on and on and on, right. and there is no attempt made to repent, right. your life and the relationship that you have, not only with God, but with it's people shame. around you, is gone. This is beyond repair. Wow. It's edible, yeah. but it's beyond repair. And this is what you do every single time. Oh, yeah, I'm glad. I promise I won't do it again. You do it again. You never sincerely change from the heart. So that's so yeah. powerful and yeah. simple, but simple. it was simple, bro. And delicious. So powerful, bro. Mm. Good. Y'all can eat it now. Praise God. <laughs> mm, good. I had to eat it. <laughs> See, don't let, don't get fooled thinking sin tastes good and everything like that. We don't Come on now, that. say that. Make sure you say that. That's <laughs> right. You make sure you say that. Bro. Now, Come on, I want to show that separation through the book. Now, let's go to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 59. One of the longest books in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I ain't breakfast all day, so I'm, I'm, I'm eating this right here. <laughs> 350. Three, five, five. Ooh, Angela, what's going on? Mm. <laughs> That's what that twizzler. <laughs> Got a little distracted with the twizzler. I ain't mad at it. 350, 353? 355. 355. Isaiah 59. We're going to pick it up okay. at verse 1. Verse right. 1. 355. We're going to go verses 1 through 4. Go ahead, brother. Now. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. So he's available for you to call. He's waiting on you to pick up the phone and call him. Yes, sir. Prayer needs to be a constant communication uh, tool of your everyday life. Not just when things are bad. You need to be thanking God when things are good, bad, indifferent. If you, any day that you go without praying to the Lord saying that you really don't need him. Mm -hmm. Say it here. Come on now. How many of y'all, when was the last time you heard from a family member that you hadn't seen in a few years? And then they just call up out of nowhere and they ask you for money or something like Ooh. that. Come on now. Come on, yeah. Feel used, feel played. Our God is not a genie. Mm -hmm. You don't just call him for whenever you know, oh, Lord, help me with this car, help me with this, help me with that. But you don't do nothing to serve him. Come on now. You don't just spend time in his word trying to be more like him. Mm -hmm. You just call him when you use Make him. it plain, use him. Come on now. No, 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 nobody's no. paid. I, I promise oh, yeah. nobody in here likes being played. Come on now. Let's go. Continue. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Again, the Twizzler. It's broken. We separated. All that good stuff right there. Continue. Mm -hmm. And your sins have hid his face from you. Mm. That he will not hear. Mm. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None call it for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Come on now. And look at the world that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's Dallas. I don't care if it's D.C., Baltimore. I don't care if we go abroad. We go to London. <coughs> we go to Bangkok, Thailand. We can go to, you know, Seoul, Korea. We can go to Brazil where, you, you know, there's a good chance you might get robbed in Brazil. Right? We go to any aspect of the world or any part of the world. Anywhere there's people, there's going to be these things right here. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely going to be that. There's going to be good. There's going to be bad, and there's going to be ugly. There's going to be everything. Yeah. Every type of person, every part of the world right there, right? That's right. For, for a country that claims to be one nation under God, we don't seem to be acting very godly most of the time, right? And we're suffering the consequences of it. Good people are struggling, losing their jobs, doing different things like that, right? If we really did come back under God, our, our place would be a whole lot better. We'd be a whole lot better. But now, in living in sin, Sometimes we think, okay, I can still praise the Lord and get what I want, right? Mm -hmm. You should praise the Lord, but the first thing you need to come with is repentance. Otherwise, you run the risk of your prayers not being heard. I said that, but let's read that. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 28. And we're going to come back to this chapter a little bit later. But for right now, Proverbs 28. We're going to start at verse 9. Say it again. 323. 323. Page 323, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. Chapter 28, verse 9. And again, what impact does uh, sin have on your prayer life? So forth. He that turneth away his hear from hearing the law. So again, when you turn your way from hearing the law, and we understood and we defined that sin is the transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. So now you're turning your way from hearing God's law and hearing the things that are going to 
you know, again, help bring order to your life, help bring peace to your life, help you discipline this flesh to not make such carnal decisions. You turn your way from hearing that wisdom right there, like, ah, oh, no, I got it. What's not happening? Even his prayer shall be an abomination. So don't, you might as well not even pick up that phone call. Not even pick up that phone right there. Because your prayer is an abomination if you are not actively trying to change and be a better person and be more like God. Ooh. We're winding on down, y'all. Take a chance. We're winding on down. So, up then. Amen. So now, what does the separation look like? All addicts, all whatever, there are signs, right? You can usually point to her. You know, you might see little gashes and different things like that, bloodshot eyes, whatever. If somebody's an alcoholic, bloodshot eyes again. You know, usually the alcohol is coming out of their pores. So there are signs, there are markers that somebody is an addict of one form or another. But now when we're talking about sin, and I'm not talking about somebody who's actively trying to overcome sin, I'm talking about somebody who's absolutely consumed by it, and they're in this constant state of separation from God. Right. What does that look like? Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. What does that constant state of separation look like? Now here's the thing. When we look at certain sins, we tend to focus on maybe one or two. Maybe one or two. Right? Page 562. 562. Ooh. <laughs> we tend to focus on one or two of them. And we do want to beat those two sins into the ground inside the other. But there's a lot of things and a lot of ways somebody can be separate from God. A whole lot of ways people can be separate from God. This is going to list out a few of them. The common thing that we're going to see with all of these is whether we deem them big or small, they all end with separation and all end with not inheriting the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Galatians 5, pick it up at 16. We'll go 16 through 21. What Galatians chapter? Galatians 5. Okay. 16 through 21, and that was page... 563. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just feel the underlying pettiness in there and everything. I love it. I love it. <laughs> So what I want to what I want to focus in on, I love it. What I want to focus in on is the contrast, right? You're either walking one way or the other. In our minds and in our world, we want to make everything great to make sure nobody gets their feelings hurt. The fact of the matter is, just like the pages in your book, the Bible's pretty black and white. So either you're one or the other. There is no in between, right? Let's let's, let's keep that in mind. Sixteen, go ahead. This I say then. Walk in the spirit, ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So those two cannot coexist. If you are filled with the spirit of the Lord, there is no room for any evil or negative spirits in your life. Right? Continue. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. When we talk about spiritual warfare, this is what we're talking about. Your carnal desires to go out and do something that you know would displease God versus trying to obey God. Continue. And these are contrary the one to the other, mm -hmm. so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Because that Spirit is not going to allow you to commit sin or break the law. Continue. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, okay. which are these. So if you're constantly living in these things, these are the things that are consuming your thoughts. The first thing you wake up in the morning is this. The last thing you think about before you go to bed at night is this. Even in your dreams, it's this. You're in a constant separation from God. Go ahead. Adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, mm -hmm. lasciviousness, mm -hmm. idolatry, mm -hmm. witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, mm -hmm. wrath, strife, seditions. A lot of these are rooted in lust mm -hmm. right here, right? And lust isn't just a sexual thing. Lust could be, you know, desiring, you know, the type of life somebody's living, right? You see a nice car, a nice pair of shoes or something like that, and you just determine that you got to have it, and if that means snatching it off of somebody's feet, I'm going to get them shoes. Right there, right? Continue. Heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, mm -hmm. of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not mm -hmm. inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not. Here, you know, God, you've got to put those things to death in your life. <clears throat> if you are struggling with those things, your prayer needs to be, Lord, please deliver me from these things so I don't live eternally separate from you. Yeah. All right. So 
we know that being in a sinful state, when you are in a sinful state, excuse me, that you are not being led by the Spirit of God. And again, the war that is existing between the flesh and the spirit, that's that's the battle of your mind right there, right? Mm -hmm. Everything, remember, is a choice. And like we said earlier, everything is deliberate, intentional. You have some knowledge. Are you going to stay in line with that knowledge or are you going to go against that knowledge right there? Mm -hmm. All right. Here's a cut. Here, and here, uh, as we get to our, you know, say we've got like three scripts right here. So here's a big question we need to answer. Does the blood of Jesus cover all sins? Let's take a look at it. I don't, I don't want to say, I don't say Let's actually, let me pull the audience. Does the blood of Jesus cover all sins? Give me a, if you say yes, raise your hand. Oh, you say, okay, thank you for stepping out there. Okay. So I was actually surprised that more hands did not go up. That means y'all have been taught well by these brothers and sisters right here. Amen. Let's read it though. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. We're going to get y'all, um, we're going to feed y'all now and then uh, lunchtime going to be here before you know it. Hebrews 10. 10, 10, 10. 581. 581. <laughs> Have a second. We're going to do verses 26 through 29. Hebrews 10. Is it 29? It's 582. 582. 26. Next time I'm going to call everything all at one time. So we can settle it right on yeah, for yeah. Hebrews 10, 26 through 29. Brother, when you got a brother Naf, you, you know what to do, my man. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. Okay, so what's the key word in that first sentence? Willfully. Say it again one more time. I heard I heard it start with the W. I heard somebody say it. Willfully. 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 After we receive the knowledge of the truth. So I've educated you. So, case in point, you need somebody to work on your car. And they have gone to school to become a mechanic, mm -hmm. right? And you have a Japanese car, and they know how to work on Japanese car, but uh, Japanese car. But they're feeding, or they're working on uh, your car with cheap Chinese parts, yeah. or or even worse, American parts. No disrespect to my my Ford brothers and sisters or anything like that. And they're done that. <laughs> but we know that the parts aren't going to fit, and we know that the quality is not going to be the same. So guess what happens when they work on your fancy Japanese car with uh, poor quality American parts? Mm. You gonna have some big problems. You gonna have a bigger bill. Mm -hmm. They're turning away from the knowledge that they have been filled with, right? Continue. There remaineth no more sacrifices for sin. He only's gonna die once, y'all. He's already done that. He's not gonna get back up on that cross and die over and over and over again each time we sin. Mm -hmm. That's just not how it works right there. Continue. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. You had the time to get it right. You had the time to get it right. Come on. Which shall devour the adversaries. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So you got to go to trial under the old covenant right there, right? And they would stone you under the old covenant, which compared to the judgment that's to come, sounds like a piece of cake. Continue. Of how much more sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden down underfoot the Son of God, mm -hmm. and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. So you've been given this gift. You're drowning. You're struggling. You're fighting for air. You just want to breathe. And here Jesus is, throwing out this lifeline. And you just like, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to drown. I want to die. Wow. You know, I understand. We understand that you can't force the gospel or anything up on somebody. Somebody has to want it. You know, more importantly, as much as you may want it for them, they have to want it just as bad, if not more for themselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first step to admitting that you've got a problem, or that you're getting help, is admitting that you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we need to remember in our lives is that we are sinners, hopefully in times past, mm -hmm. that need a Savior. Right. We need to be rescued from ourselves. We don't have the power to do it all on our own. We can get power from on high, but where we stop short, where he has to take over. But it can only happen if we're in covenant. Yes, sir. With him. Yes, sir. Do everything yes, apart from him is to risk running everything to hell. Mm -hmm. So, don't take the blood for granted. That's, right. That's the reason all of us are even able to be in this room right now. Mm -hmm. I can't tell. I guarantee you, if you ask enough questions and you find out enough about people, 
we all find a point in time where we all should be dead right now. Mm -hmm. But by his grace and by his mercy, we still yes, here. Right, right. Now, what are you going to do with that opportunity? Yes, sir. Cheers. Right, right. And more importantly, hopefully, live for it. Live for it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about I'm willing to die for him. Are you willing to live for it? That's right, man. Come on now. All right. Um, willful. Some uh, real quick. This is going to be a quick little caveat. <coughs> Another word for willful. I want to. I want to. Uh, I want to throw in there is the word presumptuous. Psalm 19 and 7. Psalm 19, 7 through 14. <laughs> so there's some there's some phrases out there. Thoughts become things. Thoughts become reality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The whole point of the matter is before any action becomes an action, it first starts off as a thought. You know, before you can launch Amazon or Tesla, say it again. Two seventy eight, two seventy nine. Two seventy eight, two seventy nine. Before you can launch Tesla, before you can launch Amazon, before you can launch anything, you have to sit down and come up with the idea. Before you can launch M twenty five. You have to sit down and come up with the idea. The Lord has to give you something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to think about it. You have to plan for it. the good, the bad, the ugly, the unexpected. You have to budget. You have to do all these things. You have to think about these things, right? right. Same thing goes with your actions and your choices in your day-to-day -day life. You know, some people, you know, will say, hey, you know, today, today, today is it. I've had enough. I'm going to off myself today. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't believe personally that somebody just wakes up and just thinks like that. I think that's usually a series of events that lead up to that, and that is the final decision that they have made right there, right? Right. But a few choices maybe going to the left instead of going to the right might have had a different outcome. Your little bitty choices are going to mount up into one big choice, both in this life and in the life to come. And it starts off with being real with yourself and checking your motives, your intents, and thinking about your thinking. Pick it up at 7. Psalm 19, verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, yes, sir. making wise the simple. Yes, sir. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Mm -hmm. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Mm -hmm. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, mm -hmm. and in keeping of them there is a great there is great reward. Mm -hmm. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from my from secret faults. When you pray, ask for God to reveal to the things, uh, reveal things about you that you may not even be aware of. Mm -hmm. There are certain things in us that we just certain demons in us that we may not even know exist in us. Mm -hmm. And we need to help getting those things before they get us. Mm -hmm. This is where we say, please deal with us in your mercy, not in your wrath. Continue. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. I would normally ask you to highlight and mark in there, but these aren't you know, Bibles yet, so you know. But keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. sins. Now, we've been doing this whole word association thing. What's another word you think for presumptuous? Person. Per uh, 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 purposeful. Purposeful. I dig it. I dig it. There's another one. It usually comes before the word murder. Pre. Meditated. There it is. Meditated. And you notice the word in there, meditate, it sounds a lot like the word meditate, meditate. which is thinking and meditating. Mm -hmm. So in other words, before I went and I killed that person, I was Not meditating right. on the idea. I thought about it mm -hmm. beforehand, pre, before I did it. Make it plain, bro. Yes, sir. Damn. He backed that servant also from presumption of sin. <laughs> If you are keeping the word of God, specifically his law, statutes, and commandments in the forefront of your mind, that premeditation isn't even a thing. Because your meditation, your mind, is somewhere on things that are pleasing God. Finish that off for us. Number 13. Let them not have dominion over me. No rulership. Go ahead. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Say it again, man. Oof. All right. That's winding, winding on down. Um, verse 14. Oh, you want first, uh, verse 14? Go ahead, man. Sorry. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So I'm going to flip my order real quick, and then we're going we're gonna to wrap up. So these are our last two scripts. Um, we've talked about sin. We've talked about separation and everything like that. Now we need to get it off of us, right? And it starts with one basic action, repent. You know, we can talk about repent for the kingdom of God as a hand. We can talk about a lot of different things. 
We were in Proverbs 28 earlier. I'm going to go back there now. Proverbs 28. I don't know if anybody has the page number memorized, but it's all good. 28 in verse 14. 323. 323. Sounds like an old Mazda right there. Yes. Proverbs 28, verse 14. Now, here's the thing. You can fool your brothers and sisters. You can fool all of mankind. You can't fool God. Mm-hmm. And he also told us what is done in the dark is ultimately going to come to the light. Right? So we can't get away with it. So as much as it may suck right there and then being in, in the here and the now, just own up to it. It doesn't feel good, but own up to it. Feel that shame and rem- let that shame remind you not to do it again. But don't run from it. Own up to the fact that I used to live like this. That I've hurt these people in this way in my life. That I've offended God like this. Own up to it. And then use that to fuel your change in life. 28, 13, 14, sorry. Happy is the man that feareth all way. Oh, 13 or 14. I'm sorry, is that 13 or 14? 14. 13, back up to 13. 13. Yeah. He that covereth his sins yep. shall not prosper. Mm-hmm. But whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. Two part. Confess. Mm-hmm. I did it. Forsake. Right. Leave it alone. <coughs> Confess. I own that. Forsake. But I ain't doing it no more. In essence, if you don't remember anything else from that passage, repentance is more than simply saying, I'm sorry. Because I'm sorry, you not met with any kind of change or actions or just empty words. Mm-hmm. You can say, I'm sorry. That doesn't mean you mean it. What's going to show that you mean it is the way that Last but not least, understanding that when we have sin, which we all do, we also have an advocate. And just because we have sin doesn't mean that we have to always be separated from the Father. We have a lawyer better than Johnny Cochran. I'm talking about somebody like we know Johnny got got OJ off. Jesus is even better right there, right? Many times better. Yeah, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. First John 5, the epistle. Toward the end of the Bible. Toward the end of the Bible. First John 5, excuse me, 1. First John 1, 5 through 10. First John 1. 591. There it is. Ooh, that's a new voice, but I love it. First John 1, 5 through 10. So we have the separation, but that's not the end of the world. It is absolutely not the end of the world. No. But again, we understand we must cherish the blood that was shed for. First John 1, 5 through 10. Go ahead, my brother. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you mm-hmm. that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. He's not looking for hypocrites, mm-hmm. right? You can't confess one thing and live another way, mm-hmm. right? You hate that when people are fake around you. I would think that God would feel the same way and hate fake servants around him. Go ahead. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Yes. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Mm -hmm. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So everything is very conditional. He is faithful and just if we confess, if we repent and do all those things. Mm-hmm. But if we keep habitually, perpetually, whatever fancy words you want to use, if we keep choosing to on his blood to kick it, to, to, to treat it like garbage, he can't do nothing for us. How are you going to defend somebody that you know is guilty? I mean, he does it for us because we're all guilty in some form or fashion. But he's also helping us because we're trying to change. You know, I can go to the judge and be like, hey, listen, he's done time. He's, you know, got involved with his community. He's done speaking engagements, talking about why this is a bad thing. He's trying to change, judge. Have mercy upon him. But if you are just cold and callous and there's no remorse in your eyes, no change in your heart or anything like that, hey, he's guilty, your honor. That's it. That's it, bro. That's it. That's it. Make it plain. Just like Pilate washed his hands of the blood. I'm done with you. That's right, brother. I'm done with you. That's why I can never be a lawyer. 
especially a public defender, when I know somebody's guilty, guilty, you took somebody's from, uh, family member from them, I don't know how they do it. Mm. Yet we got Jesus, mm. who's willing to give anybody a chance if they want it. Yeah. But not everybody wants it. Amen. Go ahead, my brother. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And, the, and his word is not in us. Mm -hmm. That's it. So in other words, at the end of the day, you've got to be honest and be real with yourself. Yes. That is the only way change is going to even remotely begin to happen. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I hope everybody got something from this. Remember, sin, transgression of the law, it is a choice. Yes, sir. You have the blood. Stay under the blood that you may be cleansed. Love your brother. Love God. Live for him. Don't just be willing to die for him. Thank you. All right, man. Excellent. All right, we're going to pray out. If um, anybody had any questions, uh, questions and answers, yes. we can do questions and answers uh, uh, after yeah. we pray out. Yes. All right. Just one quick comment. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Uh, Brother Tobias, he uh, uh, made mention to the mind. It, thought, it, it starts in the mind. Mm -hmm. so you think on something and you dwell on it and you dwell on it. Eventually, you're going to act on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was watching some YouTube videos. The other night, and it was about home invasions. And people have been killed in home invasions. Yep. Now, you think about it. If you're at your home, relaxing, you know, just taking it easy, and you hear just a casual knock at the door. Mm -hmm. What you gonna do? You know, you gonna open the door, open the door. Hey, it's your pocket. Hey, come on in. Yeah, let's do whatever. You know? Okay, then you hear another, you hear a knock, another casual knock. And you do the same thing, you open the door, but this time, it's a real home invasion. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, that danger was at the door. Would you have opened the door? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get you get in defense mode, right? Mm -hmm. You protect yourself. As I said, people have been killed in home invasions. And I say that to say this. Your heart and your mind is just like that door. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Whatever you let in. Somebody's always looking to invade. Hmm. Whatever you let in. You know it's evil, you know it's wrong. <coughs> don't open that door. That's true. Because if you open the door, it's going to affect you. It's going to affect others. That's, that's right. You know? So protect your heart, protect your mind. Amen. 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 All right. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to pray out. All right. Our Father. Our Father, Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. Amen. And the power, and the power, and the glory forever, and the glory forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 God of Israel. Praise the Lord. God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm glad y'all took that because I want you to I got one question. Okay, got one question. One question. One question. But if you go ahead. We read in Galatians 5 about witchcraft. So, like Mike said, there's a lot of uh, YouTube and it's, it's geared toward young people by relationships. And they use these balloons to pop a balloon to choose their mate. But they're using astrology to choose their mate. Like, yes. if you're a Taurus, mm -hmm. I'm not going to date you. Yo. It's horoscopes witchcraft. Yeah. Yes, yeah. No, it's horoscopes I say, yeah. witchcraft. It's yes. horoscopes witchcraft. Horoscope. Astrology. Would that be considered witchcraft? Is that considered witchcraft? Yes. It is. There you go. Horoscopes are witchcraft. Yes, it you is. can't kill anything by the stars. 
Well, the shock weathermen, they get a free job. They can't tell them. I that. know, I know. It's just uh um, You're claiming them spirits, guys, girl. You know, it's more science. It's more science. No. The difference between astronomy and astronomy. astronomy. Mm -hmm. They make y'all come to the day. All the big dipper and the little dipper and the readings and that. But he said don't worship me. Yeah. Right. The major stars when I say worship them, you just say back in the Right. And when you claim yeah, you're the same, you claim you're the same as you're the superstar.